So today I'm replacing this old range hood that went very bad. The motor like ripped itself apart internally and externally. It's really hot down in there. That's where they're cooking in the kitchen. The fryer is like right below there. So it's like 100 degrees in the kitchen even though it's probably like 30 outside. You can see piles of snow. So here's what I've rigged up. I have the rope wrapped around that mount over there. Then it just comes right over the edge of the building where there's nothing in my way on the side of the building you can see I've tied the rope through the box and then into like a, a, four, a four point hold and I think that should do it so what I can do is lift the box and if I get tired or whatever I can just pull take up the slack with this and that'll hold all the weight it's actually heavier than I imagined it would be It's right here, but the problem is it's really tall, so I'm having a hard time lifting it. It's gonna be kind of hard to lift it over this. I'll have to like lift it really high. See, that's why it would have been nice to have two guys, but I made do. You can see how I tied it through the box. I was slightly nervous when I pulled it over the edge just now because you saw how I rolled it. I was worried that these ropes were going to tear through the cardboard. That would have been bad, but since I had four anchor points, I guess it wasn't a problem. So now all I got to do is unbox it and put it on, wire it up, and then they won't be living in the inferno. And seriously, it's like 110 degrees right here. Hot. So I just cut the tape. Ready to see the beauty? Oh, so shiny and new looking. I like it. Nice. Oh, I like this style so much better. Where it just has clips instead of screws. So then you can just take that lid off like that. Oh, so they do send a switch. So installing these things is really simple. It's just your uh, electrical wire comes up through this conduit and into your switch. That way you have a switch up top. Looks like, uh, looks like this one does not. Some of them have a um, variable frequency drive, but I don't think that this one does. Some of them have like a second controller right here that you can control the speed of the motor a little bit. That's a VFD, variable frequency drive. It makes them a little bit more efficient too. But that's beautiful. This one is a Fantec. There's the model and stuff. Um, that one there is a Green Heck, which is a really funny name for a company, I thought. Um, turns out it is actually 22 by 22. See, 22 by 22. I think these are pretty much always square. Uh, 22 by 22, if I understand correctly, is the most common. So that's just gonna sit right over this beautifully. Versus this one, the original, was a 19 by 19, which is why they had this curb adapter on there. And yeah, that thing had a hard life. So this installation manual is good for a few different models, um, which means it's actually kind of vague. I kind of looked through everything here. It talks about belt-driven stuff, and basically it says to do everything by code and uh, watch out because they inherently have sharp ends. So be careful of that. Basically just says make sure that the power supply is the same as what you're installing. So we'll make sure that that's the same. Alright, so it turns out this range hood is factory set up to be 220 volts. You can see right there. Also note that they sent us a double pole contactor which means it shuts off both sides when you flip that switch. Notice the screws are both golden. Well, uh, our supply voltage is 120 or 115 volts. So we need to change this motor to work with that. And I looked all through this booklet for like the last maybe 20 minutes trying to find our model. It just it wasn't making any sense because this wiring diagram makes sense but it wasn't listing our model specifically. So finally I looked in here and it tells us right on the side of the motor. So in order to change this back to um, 115 volt we're just going to take purple that's going to go to line one and then we're going to insulate yellow orange and blue and then we're going to take black, red, and brown, and that will be le uh, leg two. And we won't technically need this uh, double pull switch. 
So, if we look at this, it looks like purple is already hooked up to one leg. The red is hooked to the other, so we don't want that. See, that's the... Yep, see, that would be for our 220 volt. So we had to upsize one of the wire nuts here, but you can see we've got our yellow, orange, blue insulated. And then we have our uh, red, black, and white. Sorry, red, black, and brown hooking onto leg one. And our purple hooking onto leg two. Here's where that conduit goes in on the bottom. You can see there's kind of a good bit of extra. That way you can tip this thing up. So now I'm just uh, bringing the wires in. I've never seen one of these sorts of clips before, but they're kind of cool. You just slide your wire through, and then you squeeze this black thing into the side here. Just like that, now it's locked on there. Alright, so we got it all wired together, uh, pretty much ready to go, the motor's been sit switched to 115 volts, so we should be ready to turn this thing on. I'm going to go downstairs, turn on the breaker, turn on the switch in the kitchen, and then we'll come up here last and flip this on. Got to make sure that it turns freely, as you can see it definitely does. And there's like hot, steamy air coming out of here. There's smells like tacos. That's not it. Oh, there it is. It should continue in that direction. Oh man, that taco air is hot. Very nice, now that that thing's installed, we should mark which voltage it is by just scratching out some of the sticker here so that people know it's 115 and we can also write that found that scratches last a lot longer than permanent marker in some instances now I just gotta clean up all this junk I think I'm gonna put the old one into the box and then put the box onto the rope and put the rope down over the side that seemed a lot easier. I just lifted that over the edge. Oh, it's still kind of heavy, but now all we got to do is uh, gently give it some slack. It'll just happily lower itself down. Down to the ground just like that. Fancy.